Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to show you five different ways to practice drawing. Number one, time sketches. Pick a visual reference, whether it's a photo or real life thing, and spend 10 minutes drawing it. Now, draw the same thing, but spend only five minutes. Try to draw the entire thing that you drew in the 10 minutes. Do the same as before, but now only spend two minutes. And then one minute. This exercise helps you focus and hone in on the important aspects of the drawing. It also helps you loosen up for those of you who get too wrapped up in the details or even those of you who hold your pencil too tightly. It forces you to kind of physically and mentally let go. <laughs> Number two, pick a drawing. It can be one of your own or a drawing you admire. Okay, If you are thinking about how you can develop your own style, you might want to pick a drawing that you admire from someone else and print out a copy. This is one of my own illustrations that I did a while back. Method number two is tracing drawings. So again, pick a drawing and it will be easier if you pick a drawing with a strong line like this one. This is layout bond. I don't have an opinion on this yet because I haven't used it enough. This is 13.5 pound paper. It's very thin. Use any kind of uh, sheer paper, marker paper, tracing paper, layout bond, and trace the drawing over and over again, okay? Using different kinds of line each time. Soft and smooth, rough and sketchy, choppy, exaggerated, really thin, really light, really strong, really heavy. And the reason why I'm having you trace drawings is so that you're not focusing on, you know, oh, how does a leg look or, you know, what you're drawing. You're focusing on how you're drawing it. Your whole brain is focused on the how, the line only. Some people are worried about copyright infringement and I respect you for thinking about that. If you're printing something for your own personal practice, if you're copying or mimicking or looking at it for personal practice, it's fine. If you trace and copy and sell it and make money off of it, that is not okay. If you post it on social media, you should credit the original illustrator explicitly. So there are a lot of different things you can do. Again, go look at some illustrations that you like. Look at their line quality. See if, you know, you're getting a feel for that line quality. Practice it. I do recommend that you do the entire drawing and not just a leg, you know, so you're really getting a feel for that line and keep practicing that over and over and over again. Related to this, kind of an offshoot, but if you are practicing your line quality and you don't have access to a printer or what have you, you can also practice simple shapes over and over and over again using different line quality. Like, I mean real simple. Practice exercise number three, draw something new. Yes, my channel focuses on drawing people wearing clothes, but I still encourage everyone to draw new things. It helps either prevent a rut or break a rut. It also helps develop new skills, prevents complacency, you know, stretch those brains. You can start small. Uh, you don't have to flip a 180 on your drawing, right? If you like drawing people, consider drawing a pose that you've never done. Like if you've only ever done, you know, girls walking down the runway, try a sitting pose. Try a back view. Uh, backs of feet are really hard, and you should practice those things. I don't know if any of you have noticed, but I typically draw three-quarter and profile faces going this way. It might be because I'm right-handed, but that's more familiar to me and more comfortable for me. So lately, I've been trying to draw three-quarter and profile faces going the other way the opposite direction of what I'm more comfortable with, just so it becomes more naturally to me when I'm sketching. And this is a small way that I can be practicing something new. It's still familiar, you know, so that I can really see if I'm doing something wrong, but it is definitely something I need to work on because I'm not as good at it as I am the other direction. So again, I like working off of visual reference. You know what I'm always saying, if you wanna learn how to draw a chicken, 
go to Maui and go look at some chicken. <laughs> If you follow me on Instagram or other social media, then you know that my favorite thing, or not my favorite thing, but one of my favorite things about Maui was the random chickens running around. <laughs> you know, you can draw buildings, flowers, trees. You can create your own handwritten font. If you don't like the idea of learning how to draw something that you're never going to draw again, other than for practice, then I would recommend that you take your inspiration images from your mood board on your current design project and draw those things. And that can help you get in design mode. So go search things out. You know, there are a lot of things that you can draw that are related to your field that are not exactly your field. Like I'm no floral designer or botanist, but, you know, I do tend to need to draw flowers for embroideries and just because they're pretty. <laughs> if you're wondering what I'm using, I'm going to go over all the materials at the end of this video. Drawing practice exercise number four, draw from memory. You know how I'm always going on and on about using good visual reference, and if you want to learn how to draw a duck, go look at a duck, you know, all those good things, but Sometimes you're not going to have a duck handy or a picture of a duck handy. So the whole point of practicing looking at visual reference, looking at the most accurate thing is so that later on when you are called to draw a duck and you don't have a duck handy, then you have practiced the duck. And so you can draw the duck from memory. And that is one of the main reasons why we practice so much using visual reference. Okay? So to increase this practice of drawing from memory, First, pick a visual reference. Pick something simple to start, like a leg and a foot in a cool pose instead of a whole body or something. And draw the thing in like three to five minutes, observing carefully. Okay? Some teachers actually encourage students to draw from observation without looking at their own paper at all. These are supposed to be short drawing exercises, not deep dive hour long anatomical studies. Okay. I've, I've been in classes where we spend six hours on one figure, one pose the entire time where we are articulating every little bump in the knee. Okay. These drawing exercises are not that. Okay. So pick something simple and try to draw this thing in three to five minutes. Okay. Time yourself as necessary and observe very carefully. Now put the drawing away and put the visual reference away and then draw it again. And then compare the two drawings with your visual reference. Yeah. Um, what is happening? Obviously, this one is better. Mm. Tip number five is to do all the previous exercises that I listed in this video using a new to you medium, or maybe just one that you're not as comfortable with. Every kind of medium is going to give you a slightly different line quality because of the friction with your paper. So if you're used to drawing with something dry like pencil, you're going to get a different line quality using something wet like gel pen or fine liner. I get a lot of questions about what I like, Zoe, what do you look for in a pencil, all these kinds of things. And, you know, I have a whole playlist on how I think about different media and... Honestly, a lot of it is personal preference, okay? What are you specifically looking for in a drawing implement? People who are familiar with my channel know that I really enjoy using mechanical pencils because I am a lazy princess who doesn't like to sharpen pencils every five strokes. I have a lot of mechanical pencils. This is the one I have. I have a dozen of these, literally, in different colors, and then these are my little... Uh, labels that I made to differentiate all the different leads that I put in them. I have 4B, B, H, B, 2H, like I have a million of these, okay? And these are the Pentel P205s. I buy them in bulk. As you can see, I have more down here. And these are great. They weigh nothing. They weigh nothing. I love it. This is a Zebra Tech 2A Frisha 0.5. I don't know what all those mean. But the reason I got it is because this is very heavy. 
It's weighted down here. Do you hear that weight ball? You can lock it. It still moves though. It moves less if you lock it, but it still moves. Anyway, it's heavy. Some people really like it when the bottom half of the pencil is weighted. Some say that it gives their hand more stability. Okay, maybe you wanna try that. This is also one I picked up in Japan, the Uni Shalaku, and this one also weighs nothing, and this one has a nice uh, rubber grip. This one is from Muji, and it is a .3 size lead, and this one, is, this part is heavier, nowhere near as heavy as this one. Yeah, so I like this one too, but yeah, this one is my favorite. I buy these in bulk. I do actually like using regular drawing pencils. I have a lot of different brands. I have Favorite Cassell. I have Derwin Graphic. I have, what is this? This is a design pencil. Here's my favorite so far. This is a Faber Cassell Jumbo. And I do not have a strong preference lead to lead, you know, Derwin versus Faber Cassell. I don't have a strong preference. But I do like the hexagonal shape and the size. This is a regular Faber-Cassell, and this is the Jumbo. It's bigger, it just feels nice in my hand. That's all, it's like the only difference. This is one that is new to me that I'm still testing. This is a Faber-Cassell woodless graphite pencil, and it's hexagonal and bigger. And so far, I've been enjoying it with, uh, for larger scale gesture drawing. Color pencils, lots of people like to do like outlines and uh, with color pencil, finishing outlines with color pencil. A lot of people like to use like color race or very thin, uh, lighter color pencils to do underdrawing. So you could try those out. A lot of people like to use fine liners to do uh, finishing outlines or just black and white drawings in general. This one is a Copic Multiliner, it's good. I have some Prismacolors, they're okay. These are great. They're good. I like them. I don't understand why they're on such a pedestal, though. Like, people think these are, like, the end-all, be-all, and they're not. They're good fine liners. That's it. Like, don't depend on a brand to elevate your drawing. Don't do that. Also, don't blame a tool for your artwork not being good. Some people like drawing with ballpoint pens. Sometimes when the mood strikes me, I do too. These are Pentel RSVP pens. I have a bunch in medium and fine point and I like them. And when the mood strikes me, I do like drawing with these particular ballpoint pens. Some of you may know this already, but these are the Uniball Signos, my favorite gel pen. And I draw with these a lot. 99% of things that I hand write, like notes to self and stuff, to-do lists, I use these pens. I, have, I buy these in bulk as well. I buy both of these in bulk. You know, these are brush pens. These are more painterly, but you can do some outline work and drawings. Look at that beautiful fine tip. This is a Kuretake Zig. These are color mechanical pencils. These are Pilot Color Enos in 0.7 size. I don't think they come in any other size. These are richly pigmented for what they are. Okay, they're not gonna, they're not as pigmented as say a Prismacolor Premier pencil, but the pigmentation is really nice. I love these for corrections work, correcting my own croquis, correcting my students' work in class. They weigh nothing. They're not weighted down at all. They have a nice rubber grip. These are great. These are just the regular Pentel P205s that I use all the time, but I fill these with colored LEDs. This is my disco ball. This is actually a cocktail cup. It comes with a straw that you put in here. But I personally keep art supplies in here. I have all of my mechanical pencil LEDs in here. Right now, what I have in these particular pencils are these, the Uni 0.5 Nano Dia color pencil LEDs. This is the orange. I have blue, green, pink, etc. And they're nice. They're thinner. I bought them because I wanted to try out something thinner than the Pilot Color Enos. These are 0.5. They do a beautiful thin line. So whether it's about how a tool feels in your hand or practicing line quality or achieving a different effect, 
trying out new media or practicing unfamiliar media is a great way to practice your drawing. And that's it. Those are my five tips on how to practice drawing. And these tips are applicable for any kind of drawing, really, whether it's fashion illustration, comic book style, animation, drawing ducks. Please do give this video a thumbs up. If you learned something new today, if you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, drop me all your questions. Check the description box below for links to related videos, links to my social media, information about this video. Hashtag always be practicing, hashtag practice not magic, and I will see you in the next video.